Welcome to Ellicott House. I'm glad you, I'm glad you attended. You know these things. We like to start them out with music, and that's why we had Hannah play us a song. Thank you, Hannah, for taking us taking us to open the, the the little talk here today. And I've got a little devotional type of uh, conversation I'd like to have with you, and it's uh, regarding the the Last Supper. And Jesus, I'm I'm taking it from Luke. There's a verse that I've always liked. And I'm going to read it to you, Luke chapter 22, verse 15, but I'll start with 14. And when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I've eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He was looking forward to spending the evening with them. You know, there's something that can be communicated around the table that's very difficult to communicate in any other type of setting, classroom setting, lecture setting, or anything like that. But there's something about an intimacy of the table with eating food and, and uh, everything that goes with that that opens us up to a different dimension of conversation. And Jesus was looking forward to it with the disciples. What I really like about that is Jesus says, I've been eagerly desiring to have this meal with you. And it's here you have God, you have God desiring to have a meal with us, his creation, his people, his friends, his closest friends in this earth. And he wanted to share with them something that was very important and then and that he could not really communicate in any other way. They'd been with him for three and a half years now, and he'd been talking to them. But you know, as they get closer and closer to this last Passover, and the time for his suffering, as he says, was growing closer, the message was becoming more and more intense. And I believe the disciples knew it, and they did not understand what he was talking about. And he was saying, he was speaking to them in plain English, but or <laughs> plain Greek, but um, they did not, could not take in what he was talking about. And he knew they would after this next chapter, after his crucifixion and his res resurrection, he knew it would make a lot more sense to them. And so he was waiting for this evening. But I remind, it reminds me of, of sitting around the table when I was growing up, and I didn't realize it at the time, but now when I look back, I realize how precious it was to me. Because uh, my mom and my, my dad, but my, my father in, in this uh, conversation, he was, uh, he was such a leveling factor. There was, some, there was something strong about him. There was something I never worried with my father. I just knew he had all the answers. I never worried about money, never worried about events. I never worried about anything happening because I knew I just felt like he had total control. Think about that. I think that's God's model for us, really, and many don't have it, but I thank God that he gave me a father like that. And so the disciples have felt really in a, in a lot of regards the same way about Jesus. He was, always, he was always in control. He was never worried about something. He was, he was never uh, um, at loose ends. There was no hate in him. He never was um, vindictive or sarcastic. He was good. He loved people. And, he, and so here they are around the table with him. And he's got something to share with them. I'm going to read it to you real quick. He says, when the hour came, I'm going to read it up, start at 14 again. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I've eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. What? Well, and after taking the cup, he gave thanks and he said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Of course, he's talking about the, the celebration feast. He's talking about the, the marriage feast when he will drink from the cup again with all of us then in the next, in the next world, in the next chapter. And they couldn't grasp that. 
and he's talking about his suffering. He'd been talking about that, but now he's getting right down to it. And he says, in verse 19, it says, And he took the bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now this makes no sense to them. And he goes on. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Now, these men had been raised in a Jewish home where uh, the Passover was a celebration of the, of the liberation out of Egypt. And the eating the bread was like the bread of affliction and the, the suffering that they felt in, in, um, in Egypt. And the, and the uh, blood of the Passover lamb that was spread on the door lentils and where the, Passover, where the death angel would come and seeing the blood would pass over that house. And it was the sacrificial blood. And so Jesus and now is, is taking that on and he's applying it personally to him. Here's my, and he's breaking the bread. And it's like the body, the body that's been broken and pierced for our transgressions. And the blood, take the cup and do this in remembrance of me. This is, this is some, this is a concept they had never heard before. Jesus is telling them this at the Last Supper knowing they couldn't have really understood it before, and they don't even understand it now, but they will. And you know, if it hadn't been around the table, it would have been, it would have been so discouraging. It would have been, it's almost like Jesus was talking about this being the beginning of the end. But it wasn't. And because they were around the table and he's telling them that you'll remember this now, you may not understand it now, but you'll remember it, you'll remember in the future what I'm talking about. Jesus is telling them, this isn't the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of the beginning.